Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You can't hear the story of the great catch from the Gospel of Luke today and not add another fishing story. This one comes from Minnesota Public Radio, which shared this story this last spring. It is about the monster sturgeon of Lake Leda. This is a story that first came to the surface in 1948, late in December of 1948, and continues to live on for 70 years. It was front page news, and it goes like this. Harold Rice and his brother-in-law, Dick Swenson, were on Lake Leda ice fishing. They had a makeshift wooden ice house that was there, and Harold Rice was ready with a spear, and he and his partner were looking into the hole in the ice when they saw the monster lurking below. Rice flung his spear and hit the six-foot, two-inch lake sturgeon behind the head. Did you get that? Six feet, two inches. It was so big that it pulled on the rope so tight that it made the ice house shake and rock as if it was on the waters. It was unsteady and they called out, we need another spear, when a neighboring fisherman came with another spear and got it. And they wrestled that fish out of the hole. It was 102 pounds so big that it broke the door of the ice shack as they wrestled it further out onto the ice to show all the other fishermen the great catch. Now, the best part of the story is what follows. You see, Harold Rice, after that eventful morning on the ice, went home and he had puffy eyes and red blotches all over his skin. His wife asked him, what happened to you today? And he said, if you had seen what I saw this morning, you would break out in hives too. <laughs> the story was then accelerated into this larger story of the fact that Harold Rice had come home with puffy eyes and that he was blind because of the monster. Fishing tales, the way they are spun out. Well, it wasn't long before they went and had their great catch uh, stuffed and mounted, and it was on display at a local bar in Pelican Rapids for many decades. It was a great opportunity for them to share the story, and it lived on in lake lore around Pelican Rapids for many years until one day that bar closed and they had to take the fish and put it into storage. It made sense to give it back to Harold Rice, who had first been the one to catch it, and it took residence in Harold Rice's cabin garage. When asked why he didn't proudly display it in his home, he said, well, where would I put it? And his wife said, not in my living room. <laughs> but now, 70 years later, there was a resurgence of the story, there was money collected, and a local taxidermist crafted a, a, a much more attractive example of the lake sturgeon that was caught that day on Lake Leda near Pelican Rapids, Minnesota. And a special ceremony was held to dedicate and tell the story, a special display case for it so that people can come and see it for themselves. And now it lives on in history, the great monster sturgeon of Lake Leda. Well, one great and giant fish is quite a catch, but it is not the center of our story today. Not one fish, but a plethora of fish that fill a boat to capacity, so much so that Simon Peter and James and John cannot fill their boats full enough. They start to sink and the boats continue around them to be filled. The great catch. This story from Luke is one that we remember being told. It is a story that pulls us into a moment that we are brought into the ministry of Jesus in this time in his life. Now, if you uh, want to just keep this a story of the calling of three disciples, it is certainly a cause to do so, but we must remember that this is a story that involves many not only the fishermen that gather around to experience the great catch, but the great crowds that pressed in to hear Jesus, to preach, and to teach. 
If you've ever been able to uh, travel to the Holy Land, you know that the geography of the setting of Lake Gennesaret, also known as Lake Galilee, is that it sits in a bit of a bowl, so to speak, and so there are sloped hillsides not far from the shore. If you remember, the crowds wanting to hear Jesus do get to not only hear him but see him because Jesus asked Simon for an opportunity to go out into his boat and use it as sort of a, a pulpit, a place in which he can address the crowds. It works nicely as an amphitheater and a, a way to amplify his voice so that his words may be heard. If you remember last week, it was the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. He had been baptized, had been taken into the wilderness for 40 days and tempted by the devil, and then he was out and able to share now in his mission and calling, to be one to bring the kingdom of God and its vision, and to bring to fruition the words of Isaiah. Last week, his first stop was in his hometown, where we remember the people heard him speak, and it must have been like hearing a great fish story. Seriously, you are this embodiment. This is you, the fulfillment of God's promise. But Jesus says boldly, yes, I am the one to bring release to the captives and sight to the blind. And so now we see Jesus putting his ministry, those words, into action. Jesus is going about preaching and teaching and healing, releasing those who come to him with whatever binds them up. We experience just before this story today a healing that Jesus provides to Simon Peter's mother-in-law in her own home. She is running some sort of fever that is threatening to her life. Simon Peter makes a request and Jesus comes to the home of his mother-in-law and relieves her of the fever. She is relieved so freely that it says she gets up and she starts to serve them a meal. Kind of makes me think of my own mom. If she were healed, she just hops up and starts serving again. Here Simon Peter is witness to this miraculous healing moment. So then she uh, has fed him. He is on his way preaching and teaching, stopping in local synagogues. And this is what brings him to the lake shore. There he encounters Simon Peter again and the other fishermen. They've not had a good day. Though expertise is good, he has not caught any fish. According to Simon Peter, they'd been fishing all day with no results. So it makes sense that when Jesus offers a word of advice, because there is relationship there, because there is a past witnessing of what Jesus can do, that there is an openness to what Jesus may do now on these waters. If you remember, Jesus says, Simon Peter, put into deep water and let down your net. Simon Peter is a little bit baffled by this. Again, all day we have been fishing and into the night and caught nothing. And then there is that turn. If you say so, I will let down the nets. While this story is most certainly an evangelistic story, a call for us to be ones who go and fish for people, to be like the disciples sent out and called and commissioned, I don't want you to miss that important conversation between Jesus and Simon Peter, that important moment when he is invited to let down his net and to trust. Oftentimes, when we hear these stories, we forget about the context and the mindset of the disciples in this period. For I think that when we do hear this word, we too are able to let down our nets, to be released from whatever it is that holds us captive, to maybe even have our eyes open to see something anew. In the midst of the changes and chances of life, sometimes that invitation to trust and to follow is the greatest gift we are given by our Savior. So Jesus asks him to let down his net into these deep waters, and for the Jewish people of the time, deep waters was a symbol of chaos. This harkens back to the creation story. 
For in the creation story, you remember that the Spirit of God was brooding over the waters, over chaos itself, no order. And God puts into order, creating the heavens and the earth, separating the sea from the dry land, creating boundaries for the sea and its chaos. So for the gospel writer Luke to speak of this story and to mention about the deep water that Peter is to put in the net, it is a reference to this chaos, this primordial sea at work lurking with who knows what, maybe even great monsters of Lake Leda. So it takes great faith for Simon Peter to let down his net into what seems to be absolute chaos. For the gospel writer Luke, the chaos of his world when he is writing this story is that there is tension between the traditional Jews of the community and the Christians. There is a great oppressive rule and leadership in government, and there is conflict in the church. So then Luke hears, too, a word of comfort and invitation to let down his net to follow and trust Jesus' calling. I don't know what kind of chaos is lurking in each of your lives. Maybe this isn't a chaotic time for you, or perhaps it is the chaos of the world around us, the political uncertainties and the chaotic realm in which perhaps we may be living. Maybe there is chaos in your own personal life that seems out of control. Maybe there is conflict in your workplace or relationships that are in tension. Today, the great fisherman asks you to let down your net and to trust, to have faith that even in the chaos, God can bring about blessing. Even in that which lurks as to be the deep, God can bring surprising results, sometimes exceeding our expectations. If you remember the story of many of the disciples that Jesus calls, you know they are an unlikely group, people that perhaps wouldn't be first on your list to be ones to be chosen to be a disciple, and yet God does extraordinary things through people like Simon Peter and James and John. And God does extraordinary things through disciples like you as well. Sometimes we discover that it is in these call stories that we are renewed in our call to follow. If you remember, Simon Peter felt that he was unworthy. He said, Lord, go away from me. I am a sinful man. And yet, Jesus offers him grace upon grace, saying to Simon Peter, Do not be afraid, for I will make you a catcher of people. I will be with you. I have sent you out now, and I will guide you, and I will be your light. This word for you today, whether you feel worthy as a disciple of Jesus or not, whether you feel like the call is truly to you is one to trust and to let down your net. God will provide. God will exceed your expectations Who knows what great catch is yet to be seen. And so we follow, and we keep fishing, and we have faith, and we remember the promise of Jesus this day. Do not be afraid. Amen.